and welcome back to the King's Tower Farm. Before I do a vlog update about the towers and show you guys what's been happening, I just wanted to open this video real quick with a few statements and things that I've been thinking about over the past few weeks with regards to the cleanup that we did in the coastal beach and just seeing the overall problem that the country and the world is facing. So I wanted to open with a statement saying that Earth is life and landfills are dead. But the problem is we're treating Earth as a landfill. We're putting all these toxic things into the Earth and the Earth doesn't know what to do with it. Plastics don't biodegrade and uh, we seem to have the excessive pollution of plastics. We're rated number one plastic polluter in Asia. How gross is that? Um, one other sad thing was that there was a UN climate summit recently where Greta's message was broadcasted over and over over social media and one of the problems that I see is we didn't have a representative in the UN climate so kind of alarming how the Philippines who's the number one plastic producer polluter did not have any reps in this summit I've been getting a lot of messages also on what action plans can people have and I think it boils down to really just conscious living being aware of your plastic output. Uh, as I said in my other videos that we cannot ban plastic completely. As you can see, the tower farms are made of plastic. It's just really about how you manage your waste, how you affect your surroundings also. Not living in this uh, disposable mentality where you wanna buy something because it's cheap and it's a fad, rather than buying something because you know what you need it for and it's not just going to be a waste or a one-time use. And that's what we're trying to avoid. Um, some interesting suggestions that was commented to me was basically calling out the companies and asking them to reform, bringing back some things like, you know how Magnolia used to pick up the bottles that you've used so that they can wash it and fill it again, bringing stuff like that back where we have companies like that who are re-bottling their bottles and really just recycling everything. Um, for the other brands that were found out there, people suggested that we do refilling stations, maybe higher taxes on plastics, and then um, require the companies who manufacture these plastics to have recycling stations where they themselves can turn the product into something else rather than it going into the landfills. Based on studies, only 7 to 9% of plastics do get recycled. In the Philippines, I'm not sure that even is an actual number. It might be way lower in Manila because I don't think we have the proper facilities to do the recycling. Hi Leia. Um, moving over to the tower farms, we're going to be doing a quick walkthrough and showing you guys uh, what's been happening. We've had some issues with some of the tower line timers um, not working so right now our electricians are here to bring different timers to test uh, what's been happening to the system. If you're going to be setting up your own tower farm definitely have spares on site rather than what we're doing which is like calling Manila asking someone to come up and rush over. Oh, crazy. Anyway, in the vlog today, you're going to be seeing us setting up a tower farm with the micropod system in the dining area. And also, we're going to be touring the Calamansi section. I have the B team coming at lunchtime or 10 o'clock. And then after that, we're going to be discussing what's been happening with the aquaponic pond that we're setting up, the things that are still needed to put the pond together, uh, what are the next works that we need to do, and then, yeah, just um, discussing, I guess, the overall importance of why I decided to make this farm what it is today. So, brief history about the farm. Uh, it was started by my father a few years ago, and uh, I've just basically turned the key, turned it up a notch, and went crazy with it. Um, one of the big factors why we went into the tower farms is that we really wanted to grow the bees. I did see that the bees were a very difficult market to be in. There's only 20 commercial 
bee factories in the Philippines and it's the numbers diminishing it's a dying uh, I guess a dying species plus a dying um, entrepreneurial enterprise it's not that easy to take care of bees uh, the bees do need a lot of pasture they need an uh, area where there's no pesticides no crazy GPS phone signals and this is why we chose this base as our home base for the tower farm. I could have done the tower farm in Manila indoors and it would have been fine but because of our main target of trying to be a bee farmer and trying to grow that market and seeing you know how we can help out nature because apparently studies show if the bees go extinct then we will lose about 70 to 95 percent of all fruit and crop plants that require pollination. That is scary stuff. Even Albert Einstein said that if the bees die, then the human population will go extinct. It's hand in hand. Pollinators give life to plants, fruits, crops, flowers, and without them, we would be screwed. So one reason why I got into farming and one reason why I'm focused on bee farming. We're about two years now into our bee farming here in Kalaraya, and yeah, it's not that easy. It's something that you plan for and then you wait. You see, you wait for adaptation for the bees and see if they're really um, thriving, flourishing, if the boxes are multiplying. Look at these beautiful flowers today. Forgive me, I don't know the name of the flower. Um, we've started to plant the squash down here again on the bottom facing towards the outside. Oh, gorgeous pink flowers. Don't see any pollinators on the flowers today. Still our problem. Ooh, who's this bug? See that bug there? Hi, guy. This would look like a bok choy for me. Here is our stingless bees. They're going crazy. This probably looks almost like amaranth. There, you guys can see all the stingless bees working their magic, loving it. Oh, this, this plant does attract all the bees. I can see all the bees down here. Beautiful. There's squash flower down there, so we're gonna have a lot of squash again in the next few months. This one needs to be pruned. Lots of dying items. You can see the little squash bulb over there already. I guess this was my sunflower. May it be too hot for them. Oh, what a waste. We gotta study what's been happening. As I said, we have two lines that are having issues. We have stuff like this where the, the stuff is rotting on the crop, on the tower farm already um, we've been discussing to actually put a clear film over the net that we're gonna do here just to reduce the rain over the past 10 days it's been raining like crazy which means the rain is entering through the tower pods and um, diluting our nutrient solution so this has been clean this is chili peppers this is also chili peppers Ooh, massive bee right there. Where is he going? There you go. Massive bee on a tiny flower. I need to figure out why we have rotting on the trees. Here, that's not good. Over here we have some beautiful eggplant. Sadly, I don't eat eggplant, but everyone who tries the eggplant says it's pretty yummy. String beans, I posted some photos of this to our Instagram. If you guys want to see more updates, you can follow us on King Tower Farm on Instagram and on Facebook. And I do post some photos there also, but I guess the YouTube video would be the biggest source for updates for the towers. Some more little eggplants. Look how beautiful they are. It's also reading online how I can avoid the worm problem. Here's some lettuce. I had some salad yesterday, that was yummy. So lots of string beans, as you can see we have our trellis crawling with string beans. 
I don't know what this plant is, but it has a nice purple flower. So done, have to replace this guy. I think this is the line that was uh, acting up, so all the plants here will be needing to be replaced. Look at these beautiful flowers. Oh, so beautiful. This is like a type of celery. It's a very thin stalk celery. It's still yummy, a bit stringy. Might want to change the seeds for this one. More chili pepper. What's beautiful is we've finished all the paver blocks and it's so nice and easy to walk around the farm and see what's happening. So part of the plan is to expand the tower farm down the hill. I'm going to show you guys later when we walk down. Our lavender drying out which means I think it's still a bit too hot for them. We're going to be trying to grow this again in the coming months because it's the burr season so it's much colder. doing some morning briefing updates with Wilson talking about how we're gonna design the aquaponic pond which is right here behind me it's kind of big and uh, got a little carried away we're gonna be cleaning this up buying a liner for it the same liner that they use for the landfills and then we're gonna be buying some stones putting stones on the sides all the way down to the basin we're gonna make a little mini waterfalls over here where the hump is here and then up the hill, we're going to have a bigger waterfall. So there's going to be a nice water feature. Everything's going to be covered. We're growing the tilapia here and maybe the koi. I'm not sure if they're going to be mixing with each other. On the sides of each of the banks, we are going to put in the grow beds. We're going to be doing raft style grow beds. Uh, have to design how the um, sump pump will look. Each side will have its own holding tank media filter, bio filter, and then it's going to be feeding into the grow beds using gravity which will be looped from side to side and then it's just basically going to throw the water back in and just continue that cycle for a non-stop flow. Uh, we're going to be growing all our leafy veg here which is mostly lettuce, gong gong, bechai, anything that doesn't require much nutrition to grow and it's not too complicated so everything here will be a wet bed style system floating raft and we're just going to grow the harder to grow vegetables in the tower gardens um, i'm going to be headed back and start doing some designs on this i took some photos and some aerial stuff and some land photos so funny a while ago leia literally jumped off the side of the cliff there and bit my drone she got a cut on her lip but she's fine the drone not so lucky broke a propeller and i have to inspect it again not sure what other damage leia has caused to it but leia basically leaped six seven feet in the air and nabbed it she hates it screw your drone um so this weekend we also have a lot of uh, the new towers have arrived. We're gonna be setting up a tower in the kitchen, which will be our indoor tower system for the microgreens. Um, after that, we're gonna be also meeting with the B team tomorrow to check on the calamansi progress. We've planted most of the calamansi. I took some aerial shots of that too. I feel bad for my peahen and my geese. Leia is such a notorious runner that she just harasses everyone. She does want to kill them. And so sad because they're free roaming, but now because of Leia, I think I have to build them a new pen. So sorry, guys. Over here behind me we have our calamansi field. I'm not sure how many we have here, I think about a few hundred. Um, in between each of the calamansi we have planted langka 
and pineapple. So it's an alternating planting so that the plants can help each other. So according to the bee scientists, the pineapple and the langka will help give some nutrients for the calamansi to grow and vice versa. They're not plants that fight for the same nutrients, so these are complementive plants. Um, tomorrow we'll be talking more in depth about this when the bee doctors get here and we're just gonna inspect everything. Uh, I'm gonna show them the pond also. I don't think they've seen what we're doing with the aquaponic system and explain what we're doing over there in hopes that it'll also help with everything that we've been doing here in the farm. So beautiful today. Love watching the bees pollinate. So basically in pollination what happens is the bee lands on the male flower, picks up the pollen or the sperm of the flower, goes to the female flower and basically rubs that which starts the process for new flowers, new budding, new seedlings and just amazing stuff what the bees can do. Got some new fruiting trees. These are... I forgot what they are. <laughs> Now in the Kalamansi section, the B team are here talking to Wilson about what's been happening. Uh, yesterday I mentioned that we were planting pineapples, Kalamansi alternatively. Apparently the pineapples are just here for about three years and then they'll be taken out for the Kalamansi to really, really grow. In between, they are good bee food also. So what's happening is we have one Kalamansi, two pineapples, one Kalamansi. The soil has been treated underneath. We, after our soil analysis, we have uh, put some supplements, agricultural lime, 60-20. Um, not quite sure what that is, but it's to balance the soil to help the calamansi grow and really make it flourish. This is going to be a section that we're going to be dedicating to the honeybees. So we're going to be making honey calamansi. How cool is that? Another thing we wanted to set up here at the farm would be a butterfly garden. So looking for a section that we can fence off and uh, dedicate some food for the butterflies so we can propagate them and make a beautiful garden. Oh. What are you doing? Always. So we're now here in the dining area and we're going to be setting up our microgreen tower. And what I have here on the table with me is our eco pump, our marine eco pump. So this is the box for the eco pump. It is a 5,500 liter per hour. We brought out the fittings already. This one we've cut over there. We're gonna do some sealant after this. So what's gonna happen is you take the bulkhead fitting, you put the O-ring inside, so it seals it up. Put the piece inside, make sure the O-ring sits in and you have that piece. We have a threaded coupling here. The threaded coupling is gonna be sealed off to this part with sealant. So right now I'm just gonna Press fit it, there you go, and then we're going to attach that to our marine pump. So, relatively straightforward, everything in the kit is uh, easy to assemble. There you go, that's done. Um, other things we have on the table is the connection tubes. So this connection tube goes straight into the base of the tower. One goes out into the drain and then the lower one goes straight into the pump right here. So we're going to be showing you guys all that as we're setting it up. This is the valve that goes outside the tank. So anytime you want to drain the tank, all you have to do is open this valve and um, the pump will end up forcing all the nutrient solution to be flushed out so that you can replenish it later on. That's the fitting that goes there to lock that. Our cover from Tower Garden which covers the lid for the base. And then some nut wing washers. Some washers here. And then the two rods that will be holding the pods up together. Now we have the 
flotation system which we're not going to be attaching because this is for the drip automated drip system uh, we don't need this right now so we won't be installing this but normally what happens if your nutrient solution goes below the level the drop uh, the floater drops and then it allows the, the nutrient solution to get fed in from here from the main drip line so we don't need this because we're doing one standalone tower here in the kitchen and we're going to be growing our microgreens, our herbs and spices and all the other small quick things that we need to cook when we're here. Over here on the floor we have the base, we've washed it and wiped it already and here are the tower pods. What makes the microgreen tower pod different from the regular tower pod is this has 8 slots which means we can grow more crops per pod rather than the 4 pods per crop on the other tower. So what's going to happen now is we're going to be assembling the pump first in the base, plumbing it in so the pump fitting screws onto the lower base fitting there as you can see in the center. And then after that we'll just be proceeding to stack everything and assemble it. It's going to be super quick. You're gonna see this guy in my last video. So he's relocated from over there to over here. Look how beautiful he is. He's so big. Um, I don't even wanna put my hand near it, but yeah, about like that. <laughs> anyway, the B team just left and we had an amazing lunch cooked by Bare. Um, just to recap, we're going to be working on making sure that we put the proper fertilizer for the calamansi plants and we're also treating the rest of the soil because we found out the soil here in Calaraya was acidic so we need to put the agricultural lime in it and just really try to balance the pH of the soil. Also trying to figure out how to increase the number of pollinators here. We have about eight bees here. Only the stingless bees is what we take care of but we do have the cuckoo bee, the blue banded bee, the, oh, I forgot all the names but there's lots of different bees that I've been seeing in the farm and they weren't here before also the butterflies and the dragonflies and what are the other the moths so the other pollinators would also be the bats the birds so just trying to close the loop if you guys don't remember your uh, I guess I don't know what year they would have been teaching this in school but once the fruits get eaten by the birds, wherever the birds live, they eat it, the seeds don't get digested, and then they just shoot out and plant the seed in another venue. And that's how the, the plant species knows how to keep itself alive and I guess relevant in nature by spreading itself everywhere. And it's just an interesting thing how the birds do it, the bats do it, let's say monkeys and all the other things that actually thrive on the natural forest so everyone helps hand in hand when the fruit gets eaten the fruit gets digested the seed goes straight through the seed is dropped off with manure so the seed has a fresh start on getting its nutrient solutions while the manure is decomposing it is thriving on it and then it just takes root wherever it is and the manure there decomposes naturally, seeps into the ground, guarantees that that plant will live and have all the nutrition it needs to just get a head start. What we've noticed with some of the things we planted long ago that it's taken us this long to really find out what's wrong with the soil and what nutrients were lacking. So now we have answers and remedies to battle you know, just battle the conditions that we have there you go um, but yeah beyond that everything here is it allows you to slow down and take your time because there's no rushing nature it's not by demand where you just push a button and everything works out nature farming taking care of all this 
is learning the balance, learning how to live with everything that's around it and seeing how we can help intervene and just speed up the process or really make sure that we're taking care of the species that we need to. And from what I've seen so far, most important thing is taking care of the pollinators. Without the pollinators, you don't have the pollination. Without the pollination, you don't have future crops. <sighs> okay, well, that's the message for this weekend. I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. And if you want to know more, I'll be, again, doing random updates about the farm in between all the other things that I do. And yeah, see you guys soon.